Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Andy Arnott with Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 51. I hope that's, I'm sorry, 59. I wasn't looking at my sheet. Man, that sucks. It goes but we are, <laughs> <laughs> we are super, super excited to have Anthony Leon. Anthony, I can't believe it's uh, taken this long. I've actually wanted, I, you're always top of mind, but then for some reason I, well, I think not being on Facebook is also uh, been detrimental to uh, keeping up with everybody. Um, you know, now, now I've got my little, my little phantom profile, which, you know, hopefully Facebook doesn't catch on to, but uh, we'll see how long it lasts. But uh, yeah, welcome. Thanks so much for being on and, and uh, in sh such short notice. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. Um, no, no problem making time for you. Sorry it took so long for us to connect. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just happy it's happening. So um, if people don't know you let, uh, yet, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, maybe where you're born, where you live now, uh, some of the things you did in the past, uh, college, school, kind of uh, anything you want to share, anything you don't want to share, of course, you can keep to yourself and tell me, hell no. Sure. All right. Well, um, I was born in Orlando, Florida, grew up in Alabama, um, recently moved back to the States from Taiwan, which was amazing. The greatest experience I think ever. And I really miss it. Um, my background with, with regard to Amazon and e-commerce in 2014, I accidentally stumbled on a video from Ryan Moran talking about um, Amazing Selling Machine. Uh, I got started there, uh, did pretty well pretty fast, like probably my first, not even a full year in, 2004, uh, calendar year 2014, um, I hit almost half a million in sales not having a clue what I was doing. And then because of that, Ryan was like, Hey, I have friends who really could use a consultant. And then next thing you knew, I had like five consulting clients overnight. And then I got hired on to Zonblast. So I quit my day job within like three months. It was like, I can't do all of this at the same time. And anyway, ended up with, you know, about a dozen clients. Um, Worked my way up through all the way to uh, president of uh, what was formerly Zonblast, now Six Leaf. Uh, worked with Helium 10 and now CEO of Signalytics. So I have strong background in software in this space. I have strong background in consulting in this space. And of course, I've been a seller myself uh, this whole time. Um, you had asked about education. So uh, my education probably maps really close to this. Uh, I'm a high school dropout. So <laughs> there you go. Um, hey, no judgment there with the way schools are nowadays. You probably did, you know, did yourself a favor. Possibly, possibly. I might've done things a little differently had I, had I known. Uh, I, I feel like some of my learning curve has taken longer than I want it to, but ultimately I'm in a good place. So uh, yeah, at any rate, I think I covered everything there. Yeah, Let me know if yeah. you have any gaps filled. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, and I think you already kind of answered what I was going to ask you next was, uh, you, you said you, uh, 2014 was kind of when you first started dipping your toes in Amazon. And did you, did you take ASM or did you just see a few videos by them and like start learning on your own? No, I well, So I actually paid for ASM. I took ASM. The thing right. is, is, uh, I, I, I was one of the first people to sign up for ASM three and they weren't launching for like two months. It was like, you have to wait until the first videos come out. And I didn't feel like I had time for that. And to be perfectly honest, the only reason I signed up for ASM was because Ryan had a Facebook group called The Tribe. And he was basically like, I work with people who sign up um, closely and I wanted access to him. Yeah. So I signed up and basically jumped ahead of everybody because I went and started reading up on importing myself. I started talking to suppliers myself. So by the time like ASM opened and everybody was looking at the modules about like, how do I contact my first supplier? I was like, yeah, my first inventory order is already on the ocean. And they were like, right. how did that happen? Did you get like videos leaked? It's like, no, I just, I literally just went and bought a couple of eBooks and figured it out. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Which, uh, which, you know, I mean, courses are fantastic, but you know, th there's, 
there's so many great resources out there these days. Um, you know, courses are kind of a shortcut, you know, but um, you can always get started without them. You know, there's so many podcasts, YouTube people. I mean, it's hard to uh, kind of gauge, you know, who's right, who's not. Everybody's got, you know, a different opinion. Everybody does things a little bit differently. Um, you know, so that's always kind of hard to navigate. But uh, I love that nowadays, you know, uh, even back, you know, when I started 2011, there was nothing. I mean, in 2014, there was a little bit. And now there's tons. I mean, the, the kind of things that you can learn now, the free content that is available now is is unbelievable, especially like some of the stuff you're putting out on TikTok. And, you know, uh, we, we pretty much don't hold anything, uh, you know, in secret here um, either. We're just, you know, sh sharing everything that works. And, and uh, so I think that's kind of a cool place that we, we've started to go to. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And actually to touch on that, I firmly believe that content and courses are awesome for course correction, but none of that stuff's going to actually start the plane. So there's no reason for you to wait, just start the plane. And then you can consume all the content to figure out whether or not you're on the right path or whether or not you need to steer. Um, so that's the reason why I jumped on it. Cause it was like, look, if I screw up, I'll figure out what I did wrong and I'll fix it. But you know, if I don't start this now, it was my first business endeavor ever. So it was like, if I don't start this now, I might lose my nerve and then I'll end up, you know, one of those people just talking about how one day I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's that. People, yeah, that, that's an epic point. And I think that's that so many people get stuck there. You know, they, they, you know, talk themselves out, talk themselves out of getting started, you know, because of one reason or another. And it's the people who are just like, you know what, I'm going to start doing this. And, you know, if it, if it fails then it fails and I just learn from it and move on, you know, those are the people that are, are, are going to actually make some forward progress. You know, you can take, you know, a thousand courses, but if you never take action on them, they won't do you any good. Right. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Anthony, you're kind of like an advanced guy, which I like. Um, so like, like today, like right now, what do you think is the most, uh, you know, not necessarily, doesn't have to be super advanced, but what do you think is a, a, an advanced tactic that's that, you know, that successful sellers are using today that a lot of sellers aren't uh, utilizing? So, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many different tactics and I'm not really sure like who's using them and who's not. And their effectiveness is always, you know, works great for some, not so much for others. I think um, probably one of the most recent tactics that, that I shared, I definitely didn't invent it though, uh, was um, for people who were doing any kind of promotions, switching up the URLs. Um, and honestly, everybody gets stuck on the mechanics there. Like what URL should you use? It doesn't matter. Just switch them. <laughs> like that was the magic of the, of the lesson. The tactic is to start making it look like you have multiple traffic streams and, uh, and your marketing is mixed up through, you know, various uh, channels, yeah. but, you know, diving deeper in, you know, the, what, what we were doing was masking the URLs with, um, with a URL shortener and then adding the, uh, social share tags. So that's something that, uh, a lot of where I learned it from were advanced sellers. Uh, that's something that a lot of the advanced sellers are kind of doing um, yeah. in their promotions right now. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And yeah, we've been, we've been sharing that for a while about using uh, diverse traffic, right? You want to send, send, especially like for a launch, right? You want to send as much diverse traffic to Amazon as possible to make it look as uh, natural and organic as possible. You know, whether it's different URLs, different, you know, sources, Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, Pinterest. I mean, there's so many, you know, ways to get the word out now. Influencers. Um, that's such a great point. And I think that a lot of people still to this day are not utilizing offsite traffic, which I feel like in 2020 is, you know, if you're not doing that, you're going to have a really, really hard time competing because people like you and me are, you know, utilizing those types of tactics, um, you know, to, to, to get our, our products out there. Um, I know you, I, I recently saw you talking about Etsy. Uh, Etsy is actually a marketplace that I've started to go really strong on lately because there's so many people didn't realize, I didn't realize this until I really started digging in. Like Etsy is an amazing marketplace. Um, one of the reasons is, you know, unless you've got a super old Amazon account like Amy, <laughs> you don't get paid out daily, which on Etsy after 90 days you do. And even before 90 days, it's, you get paid out every three days, which is epic, you know, cause then you can take that money and reinvest right away into, you know, either more product, new product, things like that. Um, 
Any other marketplaces that you're kind of diving into or, or seeing opportunity in? Yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm a really big advocate of these little app-based uh, selling apps. I feel like that's these are the stepping stones to the direction that all e-commerce is eventually going to move into. So I actually sell stuff act, uh, actively on Mercari. Mm -hmm. I've attempted to on Poshmark, but Poshmark has like a social element that I haven't quite figured out how to get into. I think a lot of it is uh, more like female fashion forward and I can't even wrap my head around how to participate in that. Right. Um, I have stuff listed on Poshmark. It doesn't sell though, um, but <laughs> I know that some people have had a lot of success with it. Um, but yeah, so, and then uh, I, I played around a little bit with uh, let go, but that's more, obviously that won't work right now. Cause that's more, you go somewhere and you meet somebody and right now we're trying to, you know, keep that distance. Right. Um, but yeah, but Mercari has been fun. Uh, Cause I actually do post stuff regularly and then, and it, and it sells. Yeah. Um, and it's cool because the app itself. So one of the limitations is that you can only put one listing at a time. Mm -hmm. But one of the cool things about it is uh, you get to see right there what sold in the last, you know, 10 minutes, last hour. So you actually all the time get to see like what kind of things people are buying. Right. And, uh, and, and that those are absurdly valuable insights that on any other platform you typically have to pay for uh, or at very least have to be advanced enough to know like how to find and aggregate. So right. uh, that's really fun. But yeah, those yeah. are those are the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing that too. Actually what, what we use it a lot for is to just get rid of like uh, inventory that's been sitting. Right. Um, and the other cool thing is, you know, no, you know, no fees. Uh, it's a, usually a cash transaction. Um, you know, all those things are, 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 um, you know, definite positives. And like you mentioned, it is neat how you can get kind of that, that instant feedback on, on what's selling. Um, the other cool thing going back to Etsy that we've noticed is that like the, the data on Etsy, um, you know, they, they've rolled out some new analytics and things like that. And what I can tell is the, the average seller on Etsy is not super advanced, right? It's a lot of like artists and people who are, might not be super versed on, you know, marketing and things like that. Not a bash, you know, if you're an artist, you know, the, the chances of you being into that might be less than, you know, geeks like me who like, you know, watch videos, hours a day, of, uh, a video about, you know, how to market, how to sell, how to, you know, avatars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's why I love to those types of alternative platforms because they're so far behind Amazon in terms of um, sophistication of the seller that there's tons and tons of opportunities. Yeah, no, I actually am really excited about the data from Etsy too, uh, just because that is another one of those things that kind of lets you get a pulse of, of uh, the marketplace in general. Uh, I subscribe to a software, very rudimentary. Um, Gosh, I almost wish they would let me on their team so I could just tell them how to make it even better. But it's the, uh, you know, it's so is it uh, uh, E rank, E rank, E rank, yeah, yeah. 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 And so I'm I'm watching like all the biggest sellers of the period of you know yesterday, seeing what's going on right now. A lot of the data, I I won't, I won't say it's skewed because it's very relevant, but a lot of the data is you know people who are making face masks are making a killing right now on Etsy. Yeah. Like, I don't know if now would be too late to jump into that, but I know that a month ago, everybody that did is, I mean, n like Amazon level numbers yeah. is what they're selling, which is absurd, right? Yeah. It's um, so that's, it's really cool to though, though, to kind of see like this, you know, they're seeing unprecedented growth, what's up 71% from last year. Yep. So I feel like Etsy's going to become a contender. And, it is uh, well, the, and the, like I said, the way they treat their sellers. I mean, just my last few months of interactions with you know their team and things like that. It's it, they're extremely pro uh, seller, you know, which mm -hmm. is uh, so refreshing coming from Amazon. Um, and they also have a, a a lot of people don't realize this. They have an ad platform, and it's like Amazon's ad platform in the early days. It's it's rudimentary, and there's you can't do a whole lot. Like you can only set a budget. You can't set bids. You can't like there's yep. nothing you can do there, but it's so underutilized right now. Like if you go into Etsy with a smart product and a good plan, um, you can just dominate. It's, it's yep. unbelievable. Absolutely. I'm just bringing on a bunch of new competitors for myself on Etsy. Right. But that's what, that's what we do here. Um, <laughs> so right now, like today, if you were just getting started, I mean, would you still put Amazon at the, you know, as your first choice of getting your product on, would you be looking at 
you know, some of these alternative things? Would you be looking at like Shopify with the, you know, there's, there's rumblings about that shop app, you know, turning into like a marketplace, like where would you put your energy if you were launching today? So, I mean, that's an excellent question, especially considering the fact that I'm like just put down a deposit for the first order of a brand new brand. Uh, so I'll actually be going through these, uh, these steps. I think it all depends on your budget. Um, basically I'm a firm believer at this point in testing everything, right? Uh, I, I didn't used to be as much in the past. I was very, very like pro everything, Amazon, like do your research and, you, and, and, you know, go all in. Uh, now I'm like, wow, I can't even, at one point I think that might've been good advice. Now I think that's the worst advice ever. Like you should test everything. So it really depends on where your budget's at. If you can afford to start the test on Amazon, I think it's good to go there uh, because um, you know, the opportunity for, regaining recouping your expenses quickly uh, is better there uh, but if you're working with a super low budget and you're worried then you need to i would suggest playing around with these other marketplaces first to test and prove the concept because it'll take a lot less money so i'm talking about instead of going all you know bulk order ali uh, alibaba go to aliexpress and order 50 units and then go to these little platforms and try to sell through them if you sell through them then hey guess what that just proves your concept if you have the budget to skip that, then you want to go in with maybe closer to 100, 200, 300, 500 units, go right to Amazon and then start putting a massive budget into PPC so you can gather data and test that way. The other platforms are there too in the event that it doesn't work. You don't want to lose all that money. You can, you know, liquidate through all these channels. Uh, you know, but I think Amazon's still a good place to start, but just to tell you what I'm literally in the process of setting up right now, going to do Amazon but we are not going to put it all in FBA. We're actually going to get a, a separate third party a logistics partner, one that doesn't charge long-term storage fees mm -hmm. because they actually have, you know, a warehouse uh, that they want to use as warehousing. Um, so find a third party logistics partner, put most of the inventory there, send in the FBA as needed, but hook that up also to uh, Shopify. Uh, because I, at, at this point now more than ever, I think it's extremely important to be omnipresent in the marketplace. So we're going to Shopify, uh, we're going to eBay, and I'm going to try and redo what I did with my previous brand with opening up. The Etsy environment type of product. Otherwise I would definitely want to go there too. Um, and I, I might see how that might work, but I'm not sure that it would. Uh, but at very least those three, I think are the most important. And I want to, while a lot of the launch stuff will happen on Amazon, um, immediately I want to start running ads and ranking on eBay and Walmart because I know how to do that. <laughs> and then I want to start pushing some level of traffic to Shopify so I can at very least season that pixel so we can go harder in the future. Um, so yeah, it's, and, and because I have the budget to do that now, I can do that. And that's absolutely where, where I plan to go. So if that, if that answers the question, what I think other people should do. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I, and I agree. And that's why I love all these alternative marketplaces, right? Because they haven't, they're, they're not like Amazon now that's, that, that has figured out like, you know, all the ways to, I don't want to say game the system, but you know, there's always going to be advantages uh, for people who turn dials, right? That's just inevitable. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, they're cheating or, you know, whatever. And if, if you're, if they're doing black hat stuff, I agree, you know, that that's shady, but if they're, you know, doing two-step URLs and sending traffic from off of Amazon to rank or, or off of Walmart or, you know, any of these other places, like, you know, that what translated once again, it's like, what, tra what worked on, you know, Amazon five years ago to rank is now what's working on all these alternative marketplaces. And they're really, uh, it's, it's kind of fun because, you know, those are the places that if you go now and you kind of know what you're doing, you, there's big opportunity. If you're just starting out, it, it may not be the way to go. Um, but if you kind of know what you're doing, then th there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. Even for people who are just starting out though, I definitely recommend Amazon and, and your own website. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I'm yeah. always preaching, like, have your own website too. And, and the reason, because, you know, you want a Facebook pixel there, you want a Google pixel there. You want 
to gather data, you're going to need it, <laughs> you know, and, and, and there's so many other, they're just very complimentary. Like one of my favorite things that I tell people when they're like, okay, I'm going to push ad traffic to my website. Um, should I focus on that or just put all the budget in Amazon? And I'm like, do both. Uh, but when you're pushing to your website, what, one of the things you want to do is focus heavily on like setting up the process for, um, re-engaging, uh, for card abandonment. And then when you do that, tell people, Hey, you know, I saw you didn't buy. Um, maybe you want to check this out on our Amazon store because nine times out of 10, the reason they didn't buy from you on, on your Shopify site is because they don't know you and they don't trust you, but they trust Amazon. So you could get, you could recover so many sales that way. So these are the types of things that can only happen when you are on both platforms. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and something that we uh, have done in the past um, is put two buttons on your website, on your, on your page, right? So like buy direct for, you know, 1997 or buy on Amazon for 2297 here, click the little Amazon button, which, which is a two-step URL that goes yep. to Amazon. And then you get that little bit of rank juice. And then you also get, you know, you're paying for your Amazon fees because you're giving the incentive to buy direct at cheaper. But if they don't want to do that, you, they can pay the premium to go to Amazon and get it, you know, prime and have that trust and all that. So that's another kind of fun trick to do. Um, Awesome. Yeah. So what are you, um, in terms of like, uh, this is always a fun question. Like, you know, I know that for me, like at night, like when I go to sleep these days, my mind's, you know, I always have a busy mind, which I think a lot of people in our you know, entrepreneurs in general probably have busy minds because there's so many things to do in a, in a, you know, in a day. Um, you know, I've been really kind of just like, um, you know, thinking really hard on like, you know, what can I do right now to set myself up for uh, success in terms of, you know, the economy taking a huge hit. Um, anything that you're personally doing, like in your personal life to prep for that. And then also in your business life, like, are you like a prepper kind of person? Like, in other words, like personally, what are you doing for that? And then for your business, what are you doing for that? Um, well, as far as, you know, preparing for the economy to take a big hit, um, I think the actions I was taking personally and in my business are kind of the same. It was, it was, it was going to be what I'm doing either way. Uh, which is I'm working a lot more on personal branding now. Um, and then business wise, I still feel strongly about the product niche that we've chosen to go into with the new brand, regardless of what's happening in the economy in the world right now. Uh, I feel like it, it, it the message still resonates. Um, but otherwise in my personal life, uh, we are trying to buy a house. Uh, It's, it's going to become more and more a buyer's market as unemployment stifles people's ability to move around in real estate as much as they'd like. Um, so that's, that's definitely one thing. I feel like just like a lot of people invested in stocks as they went down, I feel like a smart move whenever you, I mean, the writing's on the wall. Like we see the economy is going to take a hit. We're going to have this recession that everybody keeps talking about. Like it's happening. Right. Um, so I think a smart thing to do is, is, is to invest where you can, where you're confident that, you know, recovery will occur. And uh, so that's definitely one thing, one hedge that we're doing. So now is a good time to go ahead and pull the trigger. Originally we were going to wait. I think, and not buy this particular house we're talking about buying until two years from now, but it's like, okay, well, I don't think that's a good idea. Now let's go ahead and get it. So if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. You, so, so you broke up a little bit when you were saying, was it in California or? No, we're buying in uh, Texas. We're going to buy near uh, Lake Travis. Cool. Well, that, we've been talking a lot about Texas lately as well. I, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, Texas is just going to get, completely overcrowded because everybody is talking about going to uh, Texas and, and some of these other states that seem to be a little more, you know, business friendly and uh, a little more free in terms of uh, liberties and things like that. At least we're concerned about that. Um, Texas! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely, yeah, I mean, There's more and more no people. There's beach here, Andy. That's uh, so yeah, that, that is, so that is an issue. The good news is when you live in Texas, you can afford, like I moved from Hawaii to Texas. I was living in uh, Honolulu and I moved, I bought a house in Hawaii and I moved here and I was like, good 
God, I can buy a shopping mall. Like with the amount of money that I spent in, in Hawaii on a house, I was like, I can buy a shopping mall here. So I have me a nice little Texas mansion and I got plenty of space to have multiple businesses in this place. But the cool thing about it is that you can literally still afford a beach house on the side <laughs> because, you know, you, you're cost of living is so low here so we're able to travel a lot and, and all that yeah so come on you guys come on to texas we'll take you in fact uh -huh. we're supposed to be the we're like the fastest growing state right now of any of the states it's insane yeah that's what i'm afraid of and uh yeah because I, I i like my country right i'll, I'll have to find a, a nice little uh suburb <laughs> Real and estate is getting very expensive here too, because yep. like my house alone, just in the last six years that I've lived here, just the tax appraised value has gone up over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, cause Microsoft is coming in here. Google's coming in here. It's just Tesla. Tesla might be making the trip here if they, <laughs> if, if, uh, if they don't get treated a little more fairly in, uh, in California. So yeah, it, it's interesting. It's, it's extremely interesting. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.